this is a continuation of Gibbs Free Energy. And I've already posted the first video which talks about what Gibbs Free Energy is and why it's important. So this is going to be uh, expanding on get what Gibbs Free Energy is. Now remember Gibbs Free Energy is represented by the equation delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S and your delta G has to be negative in order for a reaction to be spontaneous. So in this equation that you're looking at on this slide, the the equation here is just defining what delta G is. Now you can solve for delta G given the 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 values that you find in, in a textbook's appendix for delta G naught. And so Remember that your Gibbs free energy in this form is the summation of delta G and this is for the products minus the reactants. So Gibbs free energy, the units that will be after you've gone through the calculation are kilojoules. So make sure that as you go through the type, the calculations that and this is one of those things that you will do very rarely to begin with. But if you're asked to solve for delta G, given the delta G's uh, values from your book, then, then you can utilize the summation equation just like you did with delta H and delta S. Because Gibbs free energy is essentially a state function in that respect. So... So again, the, the, the key equation here was delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S, and that is for the system. Uh, this equation shows how delta G changes with respect to temperature. Uh, we assume that, that, in, that entropy and enthalpy are independent of T. So there are two parts to the free energy equation, which is delta H and T delta S. So... Now, if we, the, the temperature dependence of free energy comes from the entry term. We understand that. And when we talk about enthalpy term versus entry term, we, we can also talk about enthalpy driven versus entropy driven. And so when we talk about, delta, as we, we've, looked at delta G, delta G must be negative. So if a delta G is negative, it means it's spontaneous. Now it's it's either this term or this term that will allow for delta G to be negative. And so depending on which one it is, that's why we say enthalpy driven or entropy driven. It's the part that makes it negative that makes delta G be positive or be spontaneous and the value being negative. So this chart here is a chart that sort of help, outlines what we see in, in terms of whether delta H or delta S is, you know, affecting the, the sign for delta G. So just to give you an example here, uh, if delta H is negative and delta S is positive, the term T delta S is going to be negative because the negative doesn't, it can't cancel out because the delta S term is positive. So in this case, delta G could be negative, at spon in spon so it's spontaneous at all temperatures. Now, if we reverse the, the sign for delta H to positive and delta S is negative, now this negative term for, T, for delta S, when you plug that into the term for T delta S, the negative cancels itself out. So it ends up being positive. So here we have a positive and positive value, positive delta H and a positive T delta S term. So delta G has no way of being negative. So delta G would be positive for that. Now where the, 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 the terms change signs and are affected is based off of the temperature here. So in the next two parts, so we, this is, these are the next two parts. I put an arrow 
So the spontaneous it, at low temperature and non-spontaneous at high temperatures, whereas this, the last one's spontaneous at high temperature and non-spontaneous at low temperature. So temperature does make a difference here. All right. So for these two, temperature is a critical player in whether the process is spontaneous or not. So this is just a table that kind of summarizes that. Uh, by knowing the sign positive or negative for delta S and delta H, we can get the sign of delta G and determine if a reaction is spontaneous or not. So uh, all this is just more of like a theoretical thing. But the best way of doing it is to actually go through the calculation. Calculate delta H and delta S from the values you find in your appendix and then plug in those values in to solve for delta G. And if delta G is negative, Reaction spontaneous. There's no question about it. So free energy and equilibrium are are tied together, and so this is the so delta G is zero. The system is at equilibrium. So I, earlier we talked about uh, delta G being negative in order for reaction to be spontaneous, but in this case, if delta G is zero, we can oftentimes say that this system is at equilibrium. So delta G must be related to equilibrium constant K, and that's from a previous chapter. The standard free energy delta G naught is directly related to the equilibrium constant through this equation here. And so delta G naught is equal to minus RT natural log of K. Now R is 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin. T is the temperature in Kelvin. And then natural log of K, K is the equilibrium constant that you get from the previous chapters. All right, it could be provided to you also. So, or you could calculate it. Now, the example we did previously was with the iron reacting with oxygen to form iron three oxide. So in that particular reaction, we determined that the value for delta G was equal to negative 1,490.2 kilojoules. And so if we use this, this delta G and we plug this in here, we could calculate what the equilibrium constant was for the formation of iron three oxide. Now, before we do this, we need to make sure that our units are consistent. So we see that the units for delta G is in kilojoules, but for R, it's in joules. So what we would need to do is we need to, need to convert kilojoules to joules or our joules into kilojoules. It doesn't matter which way you convert. It just depends on what you find to be the the most appropriate in this case so what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into joules and so what to do that we're just going to multiply by a thousand here and so that means you're going to have negative one four nine zero two zero zero joules so that would be the, the the value for delta G. So we plug this value in here. So we have negative is equal to negative 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin times T, which was with this was at 25 degrees Celsius. So that's 298 Kelvin times the natural log of K. All right, so we're going to rearrange this just so we can solve for for the equilibrium constant. So we're going to divide out the negative 8.314. We're going to divide out the 298, and then we will have to do the anti-natural log function here. So... So to get natural log... To take the natural log away, we are going to do E to whatever we get from that that multiplication division there. So 
So if I do negative one four nine zero two divided by negative eight point three one four times two ninety eight, that gives me a pretty large number. So uh, it I get three six nine seven four if I do e to that number I get so if I plug this in the calculator and I just typed in e to that number it tells me overflow that means the number is so large to the point where the calculator can't even compute it that should make sense because the formation of rust is spontaneous. It's going to go to the right side. And it's so spontaneous to the point where, in this case, the equilibrium constant is so large that the, that the calculator cannot even compute it. So, and that's not a problem in our case. It is, it's, it's okay that our calculator can't calculate it. But what it tells us is that this reaction lies very far to the right hand side because of how large that equilibrium constant is. So we can relate delta G in equilibrium as long as we know delta G we can calculate the equilibrium constant or if we know the equilibrium constant you can calculate delta G. Now if we go and we look at Gibbs free energy under non-center conditions well now the equation is set up a little different so this the top equation here this is under standard conditions and the second equation this is under non-standard conditions non-standard means that you're at a different temperature or in in respect to q q is the reaction quotient we learned that in in the equilibrium chapter q is based off of the the reaction of the equilibrium expression of products over reactants and remember the exponents x and y are based off the coefficients from the balanced equation so if we know your concentrations for the reactants and products you can plug those into this equation and solve for q temperature would be given to you r again is 8.314 and then delta g naught is determined from what we previously looked at with delta h and delta s and gives free energy so so just a couple notes here at equilibrium delta G is going to be equal to zero if you're delta if you are away from the equilibrium if you're on the right hand side or the left hand side the sign of delta G is going to tell you which way the reaction is going to go spontaneously and a, a good way of uh, kind of summarizing that is in this slide here where if your delta G is negative the reaction the forward reaction is spontaneous now if you look at the image on the left hand side here if you are on the reactant side, well, the forward reaction is going to be spontaneous. It's just kind of like a half pipe. Once it goes past the bottom, it's going to go back up. Well, once it goes back up, the reverse reaction then is going to be spontaneous. And it's going to continue this cycle until eventually it lands in the middle. When it lands in the middle, your delta G is going to be equal to zero at that time. We say the system is at equilibrium. And so... The placement of, of where you are in rela relation to the reaction is really what the sign of delta G is going to represent. So, so we as we relate Gibbs free energy to equilibrium, we utilize the equations that we learned on the last slide here. And then this image that you are looking at here it sort of kind of summarizes those equations together and how we relate equilibrium and gives free energy. That's the end of, of this set of videos for thermodynamics. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks.